Okay, let's talk a little bit about this, this, the general idea of resonance. The handout gives you some good examples. I'll try and talk a little bit more about that. Here's our list. Um, so what is resonance? Well, you may be familiar with oscillations, the simple harmonic oscillator. Put a mass on a spring, it oscillates. Take a pendulum, it oscillates. But that's just an oscillator, and if there's friction, it'll lose energy and it'll die off. For a resonance system, we add some more energy in by pushing on it, by driving it, by adding some oscillations. Now, if there's a mismatch between the driving frequency and the frequency that the system oscillates, then you won't get as much energy in. But if you can push at the right time, you'll get resonance. So this is how radio works. When you want to tune in a, a radio frequency on a, to listen to the radio, you have an electric circuit that resonates. But it's also how music works. You, you uh, force some oscillations over uh, uh, through a pipe, and the resonance that re resonates at a certain frequency, and that makes a musical note. Uh, kid on a swing is a favorite example for me. You push the kid at just the right time, and they'll keep swinging. If you push them at the wrong time, you'll damp what they're doing, and there'll be a mismatch. Another good example is a car going over a bumpy road, because as the car hits, maybe there's there's a problem with the tire or the suspension, and so wump, 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 wump. And if, if that wump, wump, wump from the tires matches the resonant frequency of the springs, the car will shake itself. Okay, but so the resonance, the idea is that you have a driving frequency which adds energy. But it doesn't always add it the most effectively because there may be a mismatch between the driving frequency and the actual oscillating frequency. But at that, at that sweet spot, when you get just the right frequency, you can be adding energy just at the right time and what happens is you get the maximum amplitude of oscillation. So that's a condition. Maximum amplitude of oscillation at what's called the resonant frequency. And so you push the kid on the swing and they go the highest they possibly can or you blow on the on the horn and maybe lots of frequencies are there but the one the note that fundamental frequency of the note is the loudest the largest amplitude and so that's called the resonant frequency now the resonant frequency is very close to the natural frequency the oscillation that you would get if you weren't driving it but they're not quite the same. There's a small mismatch between that. We're not going to worry about that so much. They're, they're very close. So how do you make that? This is resonance in general. But what we want to do is make an RLC circuit. And so to do that, since there's a driving frequency, here, let me label this RLC circuit circuit, which is a resonance circuit. And I've started too high. So let me make some space. Boy, this is just like being at the chalkboard, isn't it, when I make a mistake. So we'll take the function generator and make some oscillations. And we're going to put in a resistor. Just There's always resistance, so we'll put some in. <clears throat> Not too much. I think we're only using 22 ohms in this in this circuit. And then it, some L, the induction coil, and then some C, some capacitance. And this is in series. And <clears throat> that's our circuit right there, RLC. The way this works is, okay, we, we already know capacitors, so let's start with that. The capacitor charges up and stores energy in the form of the electric field between the plates or the charge, the charge pushing in here, stores energy in it, but then the alternating current turns around and goes the other way, so it discharges the capacitor and charges it the other way. Over and over again, it charges the capacitor and discharges the capacitor. 
and the capacitor stores energy and lets it loose. So it's very much like a spring. The induction coil, remember it's wire wrapped around and it creates a magnetic field that the current can then feel and interact with and so it's the induction is really what's called self-inductance and the net effect is a kind of inertia the current wants to keep doing what it's doing it keeps on if, if it's a strong current it keeps on going even if the, the driving voltage is removed it doesn't win it eventually dies off but it dies off slower and if the current is low or zero then it takes extra oomph to push it just like a big mass hanging from a pendulum takes extra oomph to push it. You've got to force that. So this is the induction coils like electrical inertia, like mass. The spring, the, the capacitor like a spring, which stores energy, and you get back and forth, back and forth, back and forth oscillations. And in fact, this would oscillate if you if you just put a, a little electricity in it, it'll oscillate, but it'll die off because of the resistance. And every wire has resistance, so it'll always die off. But then we put the driving force in here. Let me put V sub S. That's the source voltage amplitude. And that's our circuit. Now, how are we going to actually, in the, the lab setup, how are we going to measure this? So this is what we would set up. And the first thing to do is to set this circuit up. But then we want to instrument it so we can make our measurements. So let me draw this over again. You would set this up, and then what we'll do is on the on the driving uh, frequency, the driving signal, we'll put an oscilloscope. This is a little caricature of an oscilloscope on each side. Erase that part there. There. Okay. So one. One wire goes to each side of this, and it draws a little graph on the oscilloscope. For the induction coil, we want to know the voltage across it, so we'll just put a voltmeter called V sub L. This is L, this is C, this is R, so this will be V sub L. And then we'll put another digital voltmeter across the capacitor and call that V sub C. And we, our measurements will be V sub L and V sub C. We'll also measure the frequency that's on the, the uh, function generator. And then we'll also, we, as you'll see, we'll be able to measure voltage from the uh, oscilloscope. You, you could measure frequency that way too, but, but we won't. Now, that's a good 